Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester 2, routing and switching essentials, and this is chapter 6, static routing. This is section 6.2, configure static and default routes. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to configure IPv4 and IPv6 static routes by specifying a next hop address and configure an IPv4 and IPv6 default routes. IP root commands. So anytime we, we create a static routine, we go in the global configuration command and we start with IP root. Now IP root, like it tells us, is a static root, and then we have to write down the network address. This address is the destination network address of the remote network to be added to the routing table. So the destination, where are you going? Then we have the subnet mask of the remote network to be added on the routing table. Note, the subnet mask can be modified to summarize a group of networks. So for example, you start with IP root, destination IP address, and the des destination IP address, the destination network address, and then the subnet mask of the destination. And then we have a choices. We can write down the IP address. This is commonly referred to as a next hop router's IP address, typically used when connecting a broadcast media, i.e. Ethernet. It commonly creates a recursive lookup. So for example, you say, okay, for you to get to the destination with this mask, use this IP address. So go to this neighbor. Now, this is a recursive lookup said, so okay, well, uh, fine, go to this neighbor, but I need to do another lookup to find out how do I get to that neighbor. So what exit interface I'm going to need to get to the destination. So exit interface, we can do it exit interface, use the outgoing interface to forward packets to the destination network. This is also referred to as a directly attached static route, typically used when connecting in a point-to-point -point configuration. So you can do IP route, destination address, where are you going, and the subnet mask of that destination. Then we can send it to the neighbor, which is IP address of the neighbor, or we can say, okay, well, get out of the, or to go to that destination, we need to go out of the end interface serial zero zero, whatever. Or we can do both. We can put the exit interface and then the neighbor's IP address. But it's always your exit interface or neighbor's IP address. And then at the end, we can type the distance. This distance will create a floating static route by setting a higher administrative distance than a dynamically learned static route, dynamically learned route or another static route. Types of standard static routes. The next hop can be identified with an IP address, exit interface or both. How the destination is specified creates one of three following route types. We have a next hop static route with Ceph, use this one. So IP route, if you enable, if you have Ceph enabled, which is on. IP route, network address, the subnet mask of the destination, so destination network address, destination subnet mask, and then the IP address, this is of the neighbor. Or we can have a directly attached static route, which says IP route, destination network address, destination subnet mask, and then our exit interface. Or you can have a fully specified static route, which says IP route, destination network address, destination subnet mask, our exit interface, and the neighbor's IP address. So next hop static route, directly attached static route, and fully specified static route. This is very important, these terms. For example, especially in the exam or in the questionnaire, when they ask you, okay, can you create a directly attached static route? What they want you to do is to actually type a static route with your exit interface, or they could say, create a next hop static route, which is what they're asking you to do is create a static route with the neighbor's IP address in the end. Or it could be fully specified, which is your exit interface and the neighbor's IP address. So a next hop static route uses an IP address into the IP route command to specify the next hop router. A next hop static route is recommended to be used over a directly attached static routes and fully specified static routes. On this example, we have, notice that R1 will use a next hop IP address for all static routes. So for example, any static route that we create in R1, we're using the IP address of router 2 as a next hop IP address. So 172.16.2.2.2, sorry. So to get to 172.16.1.0, this network, with this mask, 255.255.255.0, use the next hop IP address, 172.16.2.2, which is this one. To get to the network 1.0, which is this network, use the same next hop IP address. To get to the network 192.168.2.0, this network, use the same 
uh, exit interface. Uh, sorry, the, the next hop IP address. When a packet is destined for the 192.168.2.0, the network down here, R1 will look for a match in the routing table to find that it has, the for it has to forward the packet to the next hop IP address of 172.16.2.2. Routing 1 must no now determine how to reach 172.16.2.2, therefore it searches for second time for 172.16.2.2. What it says, to get to this network, 172.16.2.2. Uh, sorry 192.168.2.0 so from router 1 it says to get to that network use the IP address of router 2 but now it has to do another lookup to find out how to get to the address of router 2 so then it will find the second lookup and say okay well 2.2 .2 is on this network and to get to that network I need to exit through serial 000, 000. directly attach static routes when Ceph is not enabled a directly attached static route avoids a recursive lookup problem on point-to-point -point networks. It allows the routing table to resolve the exit interface in a single search instead of two searches, typically used with the point-to-point -point serial interfaces. Note next hop static routes are recommended with Ceph is enabled. So if you have a Ceph enabled, you use a next hop IP address or next hop static route. If you have Ceph disabled, then the exit interface will be better. So here, for example, we start with IP root, and the network or destination network address, destination subnet mask, and then it will be our exit interface. So this is an alternative method to configure in static routes on a point-to-point -point network. Static routes with the next hop address recommended with the Ceph enabled. Okay, so now same to get to the destination 172.16.1.0 with that mask, we go to S00. So we exit in our interface. Into serial interface. Again, the same thing to get to this network, we are going out of our serial interface, and the third network, which is down here, we are going out of the serial interface. So, as you can see, there was one we already covered next hop I static routes, which we tell the next hop IP address, or we can tell the directly attached static routes, which is our exit interface. The third method, this is just another explanation on how we did that. And we do show IP root. When we do show IP root on the routing table, we should see our static roots there. One to get to 192.168.2.0, this network, for example, is directly connected, it says, out of S000. Since it says directly connected, many people will think, okay, well, this is AD of zero, since it's not showing. If I go back, if I can see the one before that, if we set the next hop IP, next hop static root, then it will show you administrative distance of one and in there on the next one is not showing anything it's saying just directly connected is this administrative zero, administrative distance of zero or administrative distance of one well it's always one for static routes ad is always one unless you change it to create a floating static in a fully specified the third method to configure static route is a fully specified static route both the output interface and the next hop IP address are specified. This is another type of static route that is used in older iOS prior to Ceph. This forms a static route. It, this form of static route is used when an output interface is a multi-access interface and is necessary to explicitly identify the next hop. The next hop must be directly connected to the specific inter interface. So, for example, for this, we type IP route, destination network address destination subnet mask we tell what is our exit our exit interface and we tell what is a neighbor's IP address so this is a fully specified static route to verify the static routes we do show IP route and this is our static routes so we have configured as three static routes here they all show in the administrative distance of one so this has been configured with the next hop IP address and we can see the gate uh, exit interface as uh, as well. Along with the ping and trace route, the useful command to verify static routes are, for example, show IP root static, and then you can see that we only want to see the static routes. We don't want to see any dynamically or directly connected routes. And show IP root network, then we can see the single network, for example, 192.168.2.1, this IP address, we can see they networks a static route. How is or is it in our routing table? Default static route 
this is for like a last resort if you can't get if you don't know or could not find it on the routing table uh, destination network you will find as a default so it's like your last resort the command starts with IP root and then we have four zeros separate by space and another four zeros and then again we can say make stop IP address we can say exit interface or together exit interface and next stop IP address so first four zeros they do match any network address and the next four zeros matches any subnet mask and then IP address commonly refer to next hop routers IP address uh, typically used when connecting to broadcast media and commonly creates a recursive lookup recursive lookup like I said it's not a lookup so if you say okay to get it's like it's like saying okay to get to this destination with this subnet mask go to router one okay but the router now your router needs to find out how to get to router one you just give me an IP address so it needs to find an exit interface or you can say the exit interface yourself use the outgoing interface to forward packets to destination network this is also referred to as directly attached static route typically used when connecting in a point-to-point -point configuration to configure a default route for example commonly used in every network to have at least one route to send packets when destination IP address doesn't match a more specified specific route in the routing table so for example uh, use along with dynamic routing protocols which we're going to talk a lot later if a default route is not used and there is no match in the routing table then the packet is dropped so if we don't have a default route and the packet doesn't match our routing table the packet is going to drop which is don't we don't really want it the default route is last resort so if i can't match anything in my routing table i'm going to match the default route so i'll send it to my uh, default gateway for example i my router at home your router at home if you subscribe to isps your routers will have a default gateway so it means that any network with any any mask is just going to send it to the towards the isp that's like last resort when we do show ip root static we can see with the default root the code is s so that's a static root and is a candidate to be our default root so for example s and a star four zeros four star zero so it says any network with any mask we send it to 172.16.2.2 which is the neighbor next hop IP address as you can see the router now needs to know okay well great I need to for any network I need to go to this IP address but I need to do another lookup to find out how do I get to that IP address what is a what is my exit interface types of IPv6 static routes most of the parameters are identical to the IPv4 version of the command so IPv4 we just type IP for IPv6 we type IP v6 and the commands are pretty much the same as ipv4 ipv6 static routes can also implement as standard ipv6 static route this was like general usually for the sub networks default as last resort summary we can summarize ipv6 static routes or you can create a backup which is a floating ipv6 static route types and standards of ipv6 so again with ipv6 as well we can create a route a static route the command starts with ip root let me just mark it here here ipv6 root and then the destination ipv6 address destination prefix length and then the next hop ipv6 address of the neighbor's ipv6 address then we can have a directly attached static route same as ipv4 ipv6 route and then destination ip destination subnet mask and then the exit interface or we can have a fully specified static route which we tell the exit interface together with the next hop ip address configure next hop static routes for example ipv6 route the destination ip address uh, destination network address is 2001 uh, sorry 2001 here db8 acad2 which is this network here down here to get to that network with that prefix 4 star 64 we go into the neighbor 2001 db8 acad4 uh, 2001 colon db8 colon acad colon 4 colon colon 2 which is the ip address here of the router 2. same for the other network acad5 this network here and acad3 which is net this network here when we do show ipv6 root we can see that we have one router 2001 db8 
colon ACAD colon 3 colon colon that shows you only the network address forward slash 64 and AD is 1 administrative distance of 1 and then we are going the via the you can see the neighbor's IP address okay that's a via that neighbor only necessary is Ceph is disabled. So if Ceph is disabled, we put a as our exit interface a static route. Configure next hop static IPv6 route. For example, IPv6 route, then the address of the destination and next hop IP address. Directly attach static routes. This is an alternative method for configuring static routes on a point-to-point -point network. Next hop address route address recommended with Ceph. So again, same as IPv4. I started with IPv6 route, and here IPv6 route, and then destination IP address, and then the exit interface. Show IPv6 route here. Now I'm showing only the directly connected, but still administrative distance C in IPv6 it does say AD of one. Configure default IPv6 static route. So default uh, IPv6 route it starts with IPv6 here. IPv6 route, colon colon, that means all zeros, any network with any prefix. And then again, we can say next hop IP address or our exit address, exit interface. So colon colon forward slash zero matches any IPv6 prefix regardless of the mask. And then usually you can use an IPv6 as a next hop address or your exit interface. There you go, that's the configuration. For example, what we're doing is next up IP address. So IPv6 route, we are saying any any network with any destination, so any pre with any prefix, so any uh, network. And we are gonna send it to this IP address, IPv6 address. Show IPv6 route static, and then we should see it, that we have a static route there with code S, colon, colon, forward slash zero. Okay, thank you very much for watching this section 6.2 configure static and default routes. Please have a look at other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici and next video is 6.3 review of classless interdomain routing and variable length submit mask. Bye bye.